Hello and welcome to another edition of Promethean TV. I'm Daniel Young. Being recognized as one of the top military-friendly schools in the nation, the University of Wisconsin-Superior celebrated Veterans Day. On November 11th, UWS student Seth Goodvinson opened the ceremony singing the national anthem. Staff Sergeant Jake Thiebgat spoke about the importance of Veterans Day and brief over the history of the day being recognized. Five students, faculty and staff were awarded with the Henry Bloomberg Excellence in Service Award. Mike Erickson, Michelle White, Scott Vossen, Michelle Poppy, and Tom Colbert were recognized for their commitment to the service and leadership. At first I didn't even know about the award. Um, I got an email saying that I had been nominated and won and I was just shocked because <laughs> I didn't even know about it to begin with. Um, but now that I have the award I just, it's a really wholesome feeling to know that somebody cared about me enough to nominate me. Following the ceremony, the color guard brought the campus flag to half staff to honor all veterans. UWS Native Nations Organization held the Indigenous Peoples Day celebration in the YU on October 14th. The celebration included speakers, dancers, and a community coming together to learn about Indigenous people. Two UWS students demonstrated Native dances, former NNSO President Dylan Krisik and current co-president Sammy Keller. They were also joined by the drum and dance group, which brought with their indigenous youth who also performed traditional dances. Indigenous Peoples Day wasn't celebrated until Krisik brought up the idea to the campus faculty. Other co-president Nathan Stafford, along with Keller, still carries on the celebration at UWS. Stafford is 0% indigenous, but that doesn't stop him from participating in NNSO, which all students on campus can do if interested. A student favored and longtime Chartwell staffer, Kathy Christensen, retires. Kathy was always willing to put smiles on students' faces and be extremely generous. As a goodbye gift from the students and other staff, Kathy received a book of signatures and a goodbye message that was collected by students and UWS staff. She had her retirement party in the Yellow Jacket Union on October 10th from 11.30 a.m. to 12.30 p.m., where students, staff, and other faculty got to say goodbye to Kathy, get one last smile, and have a nice day. Campus life may have felt like it was dragging after the fall semester. A campus drag show looked to re-energize students with some flashy performances. Six local drag performers and one UWS student stole the stage on November 9th. One performer even danced as Patrick Starr lip-syncing The Phantom of the Opera. Director of the Gender Equity Resource Center, T. Wayneman, was the MC of that night's event. Who killed John Doe? That's a question that UWS students were asking inside the William Pope Wright Student Center. On November 8th, UWS students were invited to participate in a masquerade murder mystery. The game was simple. Each player had to conceal their identity and mingle with each other to figure out the clues behind a murder. The game had three rounds and provided outfits for students to try on to better play their part. Earlier this semester, five UWS alumni were recognized for their contribution they've accomplished since graduation. Our very own editor-in-chief, Drew Kerner, attended this year's Superior Soiree and spoke with each of five award recipients. Hey, welcome to everyone. Tonight we come together not just to share a meal and raise some money for a great cause, but also to celebrate the really remarkable achievements of some extraordinary individuals, and that is our honor. I'm honored, really, is that I had never expected something like this happening. Her hands on course to teaching her leadership for all sciences at the university and her engagement in the programs of the LSRI that amply earned her this recognition. It's not boring. I came to university in 1973 as a biology major and I was lucky enough to be able to work for the Center for Lake Superior Environmental Studies. I got to have a lot of different experiences getting out on different research projects and that's what really turned me on to sciences. So I definitely loved all the experiences I got here, which allowed me to be curious and to kind of expand that, you know, wanting to see the world. I got my PhD out in Australia, so I studied assistance dogs, and then I also wrote a book about my uh, studies that I've done and kind of the people I've helped and worked with. Jennifer's many achievements since graduating in 2015 have truly earned her this award, and we look forward to seeing what she does next. Please join me in welcoming Jennifer. It feels good. Um, I've never been awarded something like this, so it was, it was really nice to see. For more than 30 years, her pioneering research has laid the foundation 
for the growth of radiometal-based agents for diagnostic imaging and targeted radionuclide therapy of cancer. I couldn't have been more surprised. I think this was just, it's a huge honor and um, UWS means so much to me, so I'm really grateful to be recognized. Dr. Carolyn Anderson is most certainly deserving of the Distinguished Alumni Award. Please help me welcome Dr. Carolyn. It's just wonderful to be here. This is a really cool event. It's just wonderful to be on campus and, and to be recognized, and I'm just really honored and, and thankful. In addition, John and Pam have been long-time financial supporters of the U.S. and have actively encouraged other alumni and friends to do the same. We are proud to honor John's commitment to service and pride for the university. Well, we've, uh, my wife and I, we were both, we both were graduates of here, and uh, uh, we've been able to give back quite a bit, help out wherever we can, and be involved in things. So that's what it is. A yellow jacket through and through, she's had a large impact on the careers and lives of many. Please help me in congratulating my colleague and friend, Chrissy Casey-Patterson. When I came here, I really felt the intimacy and the opportunity that we have to really connect with our students or more of our students, I would say, by, by quantity. I'm excited to retire from here. I'm, I love it. I love working with students. I love knowing that we have an impact on students outside of the classroom. I don't work in the classroom. I'm not an instructor. So, so it just feels really incredible to uh, have this award. I, can't, I still can't believe it. <laughs> so. Turning to sports, the men and women's soccer teams took home the UMAC playoff championships. Both teams took on Bethany Lutheran with the men winning 6-2 and the women winning 4-0. For the men, it was their eighth consecutive conference crown and for the women, their fourth consecutive. In volleyball, the Yellow Jackets made history as they were able to snap Northwestern's 73-game UMAC winning streak, which dated all the way back to 2019. The Yellow Jackets took sets 1 and 3 before taking the fifth set decisively for a 3-2 victory. The Yellow Jackets earned the two seed in the UMAC tournament. In winter sports, both basketball teams started out their seasons. The men's team hosted the Merrill Thompson Classic going 1-1. One one. The women's team opened up with a victory over Marion with a final score of 73-44. Both hockey teams also opened their seasons recently. Through six games, the women have a record of 3-2-1 and, and the men through two games at 1-0-1. Oh Thank you for watching another edition of Promethean TV. But before you go, one of our Promethean reporters, Maddie Schaefer, takes us through some of the art that has been on display between the project and Crook Galleries inside Holden Fine Arts uh, Center this semester. Enjoy. Mm -hmm.